In this reshaping and offset video tutorial, we'll be covering primarily only four tools. The reshape tool, the offset face tool, the offset segment tool, and the imprint tool. There is no doubt that you will find the reshape and offset tool combinations one of the most powerful, quickest, and easiest ways to model. Let's begin by taking a look at the reshape tool. The reshape tool lets you reshape your object by interactively moving faces. Simply click on any planar face and drag the mouse. Real-time Boolean operations will add and subtract volume as you move that face. Moving the face outward will add volume. And moving the face inward will subtract volume. And moving the face all the way through the boundary will subtract that part of the object. The reshape tool lets you move your face through multiple boundaries and edges of the same object without limit. For example, we're building a dormer along the roof over here, and by simply grabbing that face and moving it through, real-time Boolean operations will properly resolve those intersections to form one good, clean, solid object. If I were to reshape this face, I can actually push it through multiple non-parallel and multiple edges of the object and actually go all the way through the object without a problem. And that's the real power of the Booleans that are driving the reshape tool. The default direction for the reshape tool is perpendicular to the surface. If you need that to move in a different direction, then we can go into the Tool Options palette and choose Perpendicular to Reference Plane. This option can be toggled during the reshape operation by pressing and releasing the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows. We can keep the edges of the original selected face by choosing the Keep Edges option. This option can be toggled by pressing and releasing the Shift key. Because those edges are maintained in the object, uh, we can further build the geometry by working off the previous reshaping operation. If desired, we can remove these additional edges in our object. A real fast way of doing this would be to use the Unmesh tool. Simply click on the object and all the edges within the planar faces are removed. Let's undo that operation and let's say we want to get rid of just a couple of the edges. Then we can use the Delete tool and instead of deleting the whole object, I'll hold the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows. And now I can pick just the segments that I would like to remove from the object. There is a big difference between reshaping a face with the reshape tool and moving a face with the move tool. For example, if I were to use the move tool to move just this face on the column, you can see that there's no Boolean operations that take place. We're simply moving the face and all the topological information follows along with it. If I were to undo that and use the reshape tool, you can see if I were to reshape the object, then the face extrudes and Boolean operations are adding or subtracting volume. Now let's look at the Offset Face tool. Simply click on any planar face of an object and you can generate an offset surface. And that object is inserted into the face. This is nice because we can now use the Reshape tool to further reshape using that new face. There's only one option for this tool. So we select the Offset Face tool. You can see that we can turn the Insert option on or off. If this option is off, then the insert face that we created is not inserted into the object. And you can see that it is actually generated as a separate object. We can insert this new shape we just created into the object using the imprint tool, which we'll show in just a moment. Before we do that, uh, let's make some modifications to that. For example, uh, let's select the uh, fillet and bevel tool and we can bevel the edges of that shape that we just created. Now we'll go to the imprint tool. What we do is we select a 2D shape and then we select our 3D object and that 2D shape is then imprinted into the face of the object. This is nice because now we can use the reshape tool and reshape that new face that we just imprinted into the object. We'll perform the same steps again on the other two faces of the object using the offset face tool, the fillet bevel tool, and the imprint tool to generate two more faces on our object to complete the columns for our gazebo. Now to remove the bottom portion here, once again we can just use the reshape tool, select that face, and push it all the way through to actually remove uh, that part of the object. And now there's our final columns that will support our gazebo. 
We'll recreate the steps at the entrance of the gazebo floor in order to highlight the Offset Segment tool. The Offset Segment tool behaves similar to the Offset Face tool, except we can only click on Segments. You click on a segment and you can see that I can insert that segment along any corresponding face. I can insert these segments using the Offset Segment tool with numeric accuracy using a few different methods. One is I can turn Grid Snap on and you can see that the offsetted segment will snap to a specific interval spacing. I can also type in a value at any time. Just type the number and hit enter. There's no need to click in any input field. I can also infer the distance by snapping to other objects or other object parts in the scene. For example, I can snap to the end of the railing and have that offsetted segment align with that snap location. Let's offset one more segment down here and move this one up a little bit like that. And I can now reshape the object to create those stairs. It should be noted that the Offset Segment tool can be used on any irregularly shaped planar boundary. It can even extend across holes or openings in your object. We can even offset multiple times on the same face to assist us with further reshaping operations. We conclude this video by combining some of the reshape and offset tools to create a dormer on the top roof of our gazebo. We begin by using the 2D Rectangle Drawing tool, and since the Insert option is turned on, we can insert that rectangle into the face of that object. Select the Reshape tool and reshape that face. Let's change the option to be perpendicular to the reference plane to force the reshaping process to go straight up. If we want to make the top flat, uh, we can go back to the Rectangle Drawing tool, use the 3D Extrude icon. We draw a rectangle on the side face, and instead of pulling out to add volume, we're going to push it inward to subtract volume. We use the Offset Segment tool to offset a segment by snapping right to the midpoint to insert a segment in the middle of the top face. Now using the Move tool, I can simply hold the Command key down to grab just that segment, and I can move that segment anywhere I want along the XY plane. If I hold the Command key and press and release it again, uh, you can see that I can go perpendicular to the plane. I'll then use the Reshape tool to take that back face and reshape it into the rest of the object. And the Boolean operations will automatically union all that together to create a good, clean, solid object. Let's use the Insert Face tool and create an offset on that front face. And then using the Reshape tool, simply push that in to create a little recessed area. And then to finalize our dormer, we just use uh, the Offset Segment tool one more time to add additional segments onto that face. And this concludes the reshaping and offsetting video tutorial.